New tonight at 6 as the country continues going green with a focus on renewable energy. Buffalo was supposed to be at the forefront with that massive solar manufacturing plant at Riverbend. Then Governor Andrew Cuomo pitched it as a game changer with the guarantee of more than a thousand jobs making solar panels and products. The price tag was pretty staggering and we've reported on the many issues along the way. Our partners at Investigative Post have been on this from day one and J. Dale Shoemaker has tonight's eye opening update on what's really happening inside that plant. This was literally a dream come true. Ten years ago, Governor Andrew Cuomo pledged to build a plant in South Buffalo that would seed a whole new industrial sector centered on clean energy. Today, the largest solar manufacturer in the United States with the best technology to save the planet. Jobs at this Tesla factory on South Park Avenue producing solar panels became the centerpiece of Cuomo's plan. The state spent a huge amount of money, $959 million to build and equip the factory. In exchange, the company promised 1,460 jobs, good paying, high tech jobs, manufacturing solar panels. Today, only 300 to 400 of those jobs involve solar production. And Tesla shut down its solar work altogether last year for at least six months. Those changes raise big questions, which we wanted to pose to state and company officials. Both refused our request for interviews. But documents we obtained through the Freedom of Information Law turned up a report from last February in which Tesla said it had shut down solar production at the factory. A current Tesla employee who spoke to us anonymously to protect his job, said solar production has started back up, but it's only a fraction of what was promised. Another Tesla employee is speaking out. I don't believe that the solar manufacturing that was promised in New York is being executed as planned or as promised. Tesla partnered with Panasonic, which produced solar cells that Tesla used to make solar roofs. But Tesla CEO Elon Musk promoted the solar roof design when it was still in the concept stage. It took a long time to work the bugs out, and the company was never able to produce the roofs at scale. Another problem? Two workers told Investigative Post that Tesla didn't like the color of the solar cells produced by Panasonic. I think the appearance was a big sticking point. They wanted these roof tiles to look uniformly black, like you have a black roof on your house. And I think the Panasonic cells, if you look at them, they kind of have a semi-iridescent, bluish, greenish color. Tesla decided to import its solar components from China rather than buy them from Panasonic. With that loss of business, Panasonic pulled out of Buffalo in the summer of 2020, shifting 400 jobs to Malaysia. Production issues at the factory prompted the state to jettison several hundred million dollars in equipment bought in part with taxpayer dollars. The state has amended its contract with Tesla no fewer than a dozen times, making concessions and lowering manufacturing job goals. Those amendments show the state knew Tesla was scaling back its solar work. Tesla is meeting its job goals by shifting to work related to its electric cars. Some workers make chargers, others feed data to software used in the company's self-driving vehicles. They're strictly desk jobs. The collapse of Tesla's solar operation means that there's been none of the spin-off development envisioned by Cuomo. Fields across the road from the Tesla plant remain vacant. So does the office building built across the street from the plant's entrance, save, of course, for a Tim Hortons. Buffalo definitely got sold a bill of goods. Uh, it was a sort of waste of its time. I guess there are, you could technically say that there are about 1,500 jobs that might not be there otherwise, but I'd say that Buffalo probably could have invested a billion dollars more effectively. All of this calls into question the billion dollar promise to the taxpayers of New York. For Channel 2 News, I'm J. Dale Shoemaker with Investigative Post. J. Dale, thank you, and you can read more about all of this right now at investigativepost.org. We have about three and a half minutes of TV time there, but there is a lot to this story, so make sure to check that out.